Okay, today we're going to talk about governing our senses of taste. Now, I don't know about you, but I liked the taste of smoke. Some of you may be smoking cigarettes. Some of you, I don't like the taste of cigarettes, even though I had smoked for many years. How weird is that? I don't even like the taste. Why am I smoking? I think I like the buzz of it. I still got one of those head rushes because I wasn't smoking all day long. But I remember when I was working, I used to go out and bum a smoke from one of the guys that worked for me all the time. And I didn't even like the taste of it. But I did like the taste of marijuana, that smoke. So for me, to not taste that anymore is good. My taste buds have changed. So if you know any smokers, you may have actually heard from them that things just don't have much flavor because they have truly deadened their taste buds. What about sugar? I can't tell you how addicted I was to sugar. I would have the first few bites, which are the best bites, probably the first and second bite, you really taste what is going on. You can truly taste the sugar. You're probably already spiking your blood sugar too after the first couple of bites. This is the same thing that happens with bread. You put bread in your mouth, it's almost instant. Your blood sugar spikes big time. And in your body, you react to it. You get addicted to that blood sugar high. That's why so many people have addictions to sugar. And that's why so many people decide, well, I don't want to have sugar, so I'll have all these fake sugars. Whether they're chemically made up or they quote unquote come from nature. Now you're seeing a lot of studies out there about stevia, which is supposed to come from a natural plant but it's still processed. And the minute that gets on your tongue, many people have a reaction because they are tasting the sweetness, even though it's not real sugar, and their body and their blood sugar spikes. Yesterday, (laughs) last night, I'm going to tell you, I was looking at that container of sour cream And in and of itself, sour cream probably doesn't sound appealing to anyone, but when you're eating keto, sour flavors start tasting more sweet. So like I pour lemon juice into my water and I'm telling you, if I was eating sugar, I would have the sour puss face every time I would drink my water because I'd be like, oh gosh, it's so sour. But now it's almost sweet. I don't have that same reaction because my taste buds, my tongue does not get that sugar, nor does it get the fake sugar. So last night I was really desiring in my mind, you know, I haven't had a little bit of monk fruit. That's another natural sweetener, but it's super sweet. I mean, a little goes a long way. And I put a lot in my sour cream. But I decided, you know what, I don't want to taste that because I'm going to want it again. So I didn't have any sour cream last night, let alone with a little bit of sweetener in it. What about alcohol? A little taste can make you want more. Beer, a spirit drink, they all have unique flavors, and tastes? And does it trigger something in you where you need more and more and more? If you are craving alcohol, then you have an addiction because you've trained your body to want this all the time. And then your body keeps building up a tolerance. So what used to be one or two beers that you quote unquote got a buzz with, 
Now take six, maybe 12. Back when I drank beer, and I just don't drink beer because it's just so bloaty. I don't drink anything now, as you know. But when I did drink beer, I was so bloated. There's maltodextrin in beer, and it just makes you fat. (laughs) There's the beer belly phrase for a reason, everyone. And the wine does the same thing. And I'm not chastising anyone if they don't have a problem with it. If you can have a drink or two at dinner and enjoy how it complements your food and totally walk away from it, then I don't know if that's a real problem with you. Maybe you haven't trained your body to be addicted to it like I did. I used to crave it. I used to think, oh, as a matter of fact, the day that my husband died, it was four o'clock and I couldn't wait to have a drink. We had drove home or we driven home. I don't even know what the word is. I'm truly not speaking English here, (laughs) at least correct English. We came home from Tennessee and I I remember I was a little bit tired. I went to bed and I was going downstairs to change out the laundry and I kept thinking in my mind, awesome, it's time to drink. So what we put in our mouths and what we taste matters. We have to govern that. If you have problems with things, I don't know what else there could be that you would be putting in your mouth. But maybe it is just too much food. Maybe it has nothing to do with sugar or carbs, but you just overeat as a comfort because... When you do that, your body ups its serotonin levels. You get this buzz from the additional food that you eat. The Lord likes order. And all of us should be looking at how disordered we are. What our relationships are with things that we put in our mouth that truly impact our bodies our minds, let's not forget the drugs. Maybe it is also you putting in your mouth prescription drugs or you're abusing drugs that are in pill form. There's plenty of them out there. That is damaging your brain. There is no doubt any kind of drug or alcohol goes to your frontal lobe. This is where we communicate with God. Now, I know there are many people out there that say, well, I pray much better when I'm high or I get, you know, closer to God. And by the way, that was me. I used to say that too. But are you really praying to God? Does God want you to change your your sobriety and change your state of being? Or are you maybe praying to something else? I don't know. But that is not an excuse. There's no place in the Bible that says drunkards and drug users. I mean, there's no drugs in there, but you will not get to the heavenly kingdom. I mean, I should say that is in the Bible. It doesn't say all you drunkards come talk to me, come pray to me, you know, and then you'll get into heaven. It really says the opposite. No drunkards are going to get to heaven. And by the way, let's not forget the things that you put in your mouth also change your frontal lobe and your decision-making. So maybe you're home, have a few beers, your decision-making isn't all that sharp, and then you decide, you know what, I'm going to watch porn. Now you've committed a double whammy and now you're in mortal, mortal sin. We have to govern our senses. And that includes our taste. Okay, I'm going to get going because I'm going to pray the rosary with people before daily mass. I'm so excited. Sometimes I do it myself. Sometimes I do it after mass. And I do have to say, I got a couple of notes from some people. So number one, there is David who laughed and said, hey, I totally hear what you're saying when you pray the Hail Mary and you end with me and you and all that kind of stuff, you know, like. Pray for me, a sinner, now and at the hour of my death. You know, I change it up and I keep trying to go back to the traditional way, but it's hard. 
And he said his mom actually said, hey, go back to the these and the thous and the us, because then we're not praying selfishly for us. I think that's a good thought. But when I'm praying on my own, I'm probably going to do it on and off because I do want her to pray for me specifically. And then there's another person, um, Scott. He has a site called Rosary Minded, www.rosaryminded.com. I think it's .com. I should check. Hold on a second. Oh, no. Where is it? I don't know. If it's not .com, it's .org. You guys can figure it out. Just type in Rosary Minded, one word, and you can pray along with other people. So there is, there are indulgences when you pray with others. Okay, let's pray right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, come into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls, and please help us govern our taste so that we know and we think about what this taste is going to do to our bodies so that we can reprogram our minds to not crave these things that are bad for us, these things that hurt our bodies, that spike our blood sugar, that cause us to have a disordered relationship with whatever that substance is. Remind us how much you love discipline, how much you love order in our lives. And help us to be consistent in turning away from these substances that we know are going to harm us. Lord, we are going to pray for all of the souls in purgatory by name right now. Please lift them up into your heavenly kingdom. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In your holy name, Jesus, we pray and we ask for your strength to govern our taste. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All righty, everyone. Get on out there. Be loved today. Don't forget to pray your rosary. Sit down. Do not rush it. Do not multitask. Give Mary and Jesus your time. Reflect on the life of Mary and Jesus. It's amazing. Okay, I love you all. Find something more with God soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.